Hello, good morning, my friends. Good evening, my friends. Good afternoon, my friends all over the world. We are again here with you. Dr. Kaustub Dezikachar, which is who is in India, in Chennai. Hi, Dr. Kaustub Dezikachar. And myself, Katia Ujic from Slovenia, from Ljubljana. First, first let's uh, check the technical stuff. If everything is all right, if you can see us, hear us, let us know. Uh, we would appreciate to give us a like or post a comment, please, down below, if you can hear us. Uh, uh, so we are continuing now uh, the interviews with Dr. Kaustam Desika Char. For now, we had every two weeks the interview with our yoga teacher, yoga therapist, healer and spiritual mentor, Dr. Kaustub Desi Kachar, who has a very strong lineage of healers, healer ancestors. Uh, his grandfather and his father gave him not just genes, but also knowledge and teachings. Uh, so, hello, Dr. Kaustub How are you? Yeah, yeah, we missed you two weeks ago. I hope, uh, I'm very happy we have resumed this conversation many people are looking forward and uh, it looks like technically it's okay because some people are already commenting that hello to both of us so hopefully they yes. can hear us and see us very well hello michaela hello rani thank you for uh, being here with us hello everyone who are here with us now please let us know who you are from where you are what it would be really, really very nice to see from uh, uh, which part of the world are you. And uh, uh, yes, I'm also very happy we are back. Uh, I missed all the people. I missed you, Kaustup. I missed all these interviews. They are so getting popular. Uh, the, of course, the teams, the uh, interviews, what we are talking about are very, very, uh, I think, um, uh, interesting also for all the people. So today uh, we are going to talk about Fabulous Four. Uh, which Fabulous Four? We are going to talk about fabulous emotions, fear, shame, guilt, and anger. But before we start, let me introduce also myself. I'm Katia Ujic from Ljubljana, from Slovenia. I'm expressive art therapist. I'm a yoga therapist, a student of uh, Kaustadezi Kachar, and I'm also a therapist for gifted people. Uh, and I'm helping people to find their true calling uh, and uh, to be stable, let's say, in life. And and to, of course, know what is ABC of the emotions, which we had interview last time. Yeah, as you remember, we talked about a lot about emotions, but today we are going into fabulous four, which are the most somehow sticky emotions that we have that we can be trapped in. But before we start, we would ask uh, our dear uh, teacher to chant for us. So please, Kaustup. <clears throat> Namaste, everybody, and uh, welcome back to our conversation about the emotions. We will start with a very simple invocation chant, asking for protection of all of us, and also it's a way to honor our teachers, since many people today, in India at least, are celebrating today as the Teacher's Day. Mm. Oh. Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhonakto Sahabir Yankaravahai 
तेजस्वी तमस्तो Namaste friends, today is a very auspicious day in India because it is honored as the teacher's day. It's the birthday of one of our second, actually the second president of India, Dr. S. Radhakrishnan, who was a great philosopher and a very, very big scholar. So uh, in from 1962, I think they started celebrating this day in India as the teacher's day. So it's a very auspicious day for many Indian people today. And so I'm very happy to begin that's why with that chant, which right. is also the relationship between the teacher and the student. Of course. And especially when the teacher has a very new and fantastic shirt <laughs> Thank you. <Captain>. So, <laughs> yeah, no fun of me. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, my dear friends, I I need to inform you that Dr. Karl Stub Dezikachar has a new shirt, as you see. It has also a very very special number. Uh, maybe you can share with us. It has a number on the back, as I could see before. Uh, the number is. Uh, it's 007, so it's so simple. So simple, exactly, you know. <laughs> James Bond. My James. daughter chose this shirt for me, so I'm very grateful for it. And that's why I wanted to wear it today on this very special interview with you, Katya. I chose 007 not because uh, of James Bond, but actually, according to numerological uh, people, the numerologists, my uh, spiritual number is seven. Oh, really? I'm number seven. This is what oh, my, my dear Rajinder told me that my spiritual number is seven. Oh, wow. So you will put this seven all over. But you, of course, choose 007, which, which is even has a more powerful uh, influence on your spiritual life. I, I hope so. <laughs> I'm not so sure, but I should hope so. I pray so. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I don't know who am I then. I don't know if I'm a James Bond girl because uh, probably I'm too old, yeah? But you maybe are, I'm... You are, you are M. You are... I'm M. Ah, exactly. Judy Dench, M. I'm M, yes. I'm not Mrs. Penny. Or how is it? Penny something? Money Penny. Money Penny, I'm M, exactly. Yes, I like it. I like it. So let's start. You are my zero, 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 seven. <laughs> you are my so, yeah. So in the last interview, uh, dear Kaustup, we talked about some basics, basic parts, and uh, basic uh, information about the emotions. Yes. So, but today we are going a little bit, uh, a little bit deeper. Uh, a small disclaimer before. Or uh, whatever we speak here with Dr. Kaustup Desi Kachar, the, it is something that uh, we dearly hold to our heart, but you can take it or leave it. Of course, these are things that you can uh, judge by yourself if you uh, are okay with that, if you believe that. So today we are going a little bit deeper. So I decided to put this, uh, let's say, small disclaimer for that because we are going to talk about things that might surprise you also. And uh, of course, we speak also about uh, our personal experience, uh, my own experience with myself, how I 
uh, perceive and feel the energy and the world and also let's say my clients as I can observe them and of course our dear teacher the same so we include our personal experience uh, also in that so how so does the feelings uh, do the feelings and, and emotions they start already in the mother's womb uh, are we somehow predestined to carry this baggage of, let's say, more heavy emotions as, let's say, negative and more light, positive emotions? Uh, is this like predestined uh, when we are already in the womb? Uh, it's a very excellent question. I, I see that there are two parts to this question. Firstly, the first part of the question is, are we predestined for emotions from the time we are in the womb? That's one part. And the second part is the concept of whether these emotions are heavy. Actually, we are predestined for emotions even before we are in the mother's womb. Because in the Vedic culture, the birth of uh, let's say a being is happening not when the sperm and the egg are fusing to become the embryo and the fetus and then it grows but already when the mother and the father have the intention to create the child so the consciousness is born already at this time and the moment that consciousness is born it is carrying with it some knowledge from maybe past it is taking all the emotions the sticky emotions of the father and the mother because this consciousness is somehow existing in the seed and the embryo in the uh, sperm of the mother and the father and so it's taking their emotions and especially that's why we say in india that it's very important the state of mind of the mother and the father when they decide to make the child, when they make the child, when they nourish the child in the mother's womb, etc. So the journey of emotion starts much more earlier. And mm -hmm. look at Vedic philosophy or Yoga Sutra of Patanjali, it's also coming from past ancestors. So we carry uh, the emotions of many of our ancestors. And so the journey of the emotions already starts much much before we are born out of the mother's womb much much before we are even conceived or placed in the mother's womb so <clears throat> the journey of emotions is quite an ancient one and it is a gift I, that's where the second part of the question comes mm -hmm. i don't believe that all these emotions are always heavy or sticky or things like that we come with a set of let's say collection of emotions and uh, whether we use it or not is our choice it's let, let me let me do a look at it from a metaphoric way let's say we have got to go and rent a new house or let's say when i travel i have to book an airbnb now i book an, an apartment to stay now the apartment comes with furniture with a bed with a toilet with a kitchen and there are many uh, objects in the kitchen like this cup and that cup and this and that etc now <clears throat> when i'm staying there for let's say two weeks or so when i usually do that in brussels i stay in this in the apartment i'm not using everything that is in the apartment i choose what i need but if i need something else it is there the same way i feel that all the emotions that we are inheriting is essentially a, a choice, the gift that we can either use what we have come with and allow that to guide our life, our emotions, etc. Or we can be detached from it and choose others that are much more suitable. The problem is, as we grow, we have a disconnection and we don't choose what is suitable for us. We are somehow getting deviated because we have disconnected from our true nature and are trying to live a life that we think we should live rather than what we should live. There's a difference between what we think we should live and what we actually should live. And I think that is where the disconnection happens. And therefore we choose the wrong kind of tools. And it's almost like putting the clothes into the dishwasher. It's not going to work very well because both in the apartment, 
you know there is uh, those two uh, things as well but you can't use the dishwasher for clothes or the clothes uh, washing machine for the dishes but that's what we do because we think that this is what that is used for and things like that so it's a sort of uh uh, we are not equipped with some basic informations in, in when we are born. We just, let's say, go into the world we live and we are not, uh, uh, no one told us, we intuitively, we are not developed so much that we know that. So more or less, we, we need to, uh, we are um, just for ourselves, you know, and if we are lucky to get someone that speaks with us in, in that kind of way, like a teacher or a therapist, then, then it might be that we can get it someday. Yeah? So it looks like that uh, we are so alone in that. I actually feel the opposite. <clears throat> I think when we are born as a child, we have a lot of intuition. Mm -hmm. And we express our emotions freely. If we are yeah. angry as a child, we express our anger. If we have to cry, we cry. If we have to laugh, we laugh. We basically, when we are very young, we are actually in tune with our emotions. But as the ego is developed either by ourselves or by the society that is imposing on us to fit certain boxes, we slowly start disconnecting. We start disconnecting from this connection to our intuition. And therefore we are separated from our emotions. And many, for example, when men, I see many mothers, when a child is crying, they say, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Rather than, okay, you cry, it's okay. Yes. Or when the child is laughing and so happy and loud, uh, the mother or the father says to the child, shut up, I'm watching TV or shut up, there are some guests in the house. So the child is not even allowed to laugh. And so when this kind of disconnection happens, then so many problems start to develop and evolve. And I think that is where this disconnection creates a huge problem. Yeah, so true, Erica wrote down in the comments, exactly, yes. So uh, I encourage you, dear friends, to um, to write maybe down which of the fabulous four, fear, shame, guilt, or anger, is uh, the most, let's say, uh, you feel the most, or it's the most uh, heavy for you, or you don't know where it is to start to heal that emotion. Uh, please let us know because we are going to start now with the fear, which uh, for me is uh, the most fundamental, fundamental emotion. It already starts, as you said, uh, uh, even before the womb in, in, in conception. Uh, uh, and then when immediately the child is born, you can you can see that the child is terrified yeah, and it starts to cry. So the fear is also in collective subconscious. So also there resides. And we, we put the things together, it looks like there is, let's say, some sort of existential fear, which is like a program around us. So uh, why is this such an enemy to a modern human? <laughs> Well, fear comes from the fundamental concept of losing something. So why we have fear is because fundamentally we are afraid to lose life itself. So we are afraid to lose life. So fear always comes from the place of losing something. And that's why it's very, very fundamental because the most precious thing we have is life. And if we have to lose life, that is where we have the software of fear programmed in us because we don't want to lose that life. Because <clears throat> at a fundamental level, we want to remain eternal. That's what Patanjali says in the Yoga Sutra, Ta -sam ashisho the very fundamental nature of all conscious or sentient beings is the desire to be eternal, but we can't be eternal. Nobody in this world is eternal. So 
there is going to be at some moment the loss of life. So fear is given as a program to prolong life so that when there is really a threat to life, fear will save us and therefore we will somehow live. For example, that's why when we fall from the mountain, it's fear that is making us reach to a branch of a tree so that we don't die. Yeah. So fear is very inherent in us and it's something that we don't need to learn like other things, but fear is something that we need to learn. And it's very fundamental, but at the same time, this problem is that we disconnect from what is life from really an existential state to a construct of life that we create based on our ego. In, that's what I told you in the last interview, fear creates the ego structure. Mm -hmm. so when we fear creates the ego structure, we get used to that ego structure. Then when we feel that we are going to lose that, then fear starts to become inherent. So, for example, somebody has a job and it has a status. They have fear of retirement or fear of losing that job. And that's why many people have fear now because they, the society has a lot of these, what we call unimportant ego structures. We have given, we have replaced life with lifestyle. If I lose my car, I'm afraid. Yeah. If I lose my job, I'm afraid. If I lose my house, I'm afraid. If I lose my status, I'm afraid. And therefore we have replaced this concept of life with lifestyle and we have gotten so used to this. And that's why there is that systemic fear because in reality, we don't necessarily have to have that fear. Why do we hoard things? Because we are afraid that on a difficult day, we will not have something, but if we all in this world, everybody ate only what is needed, we will have no problems. If you look at animals, they don't store food in the refrigerator. They do very little things. They are not like us who are storing and mass storing things <clears throat> way beyond what we need. Animals just eat what they need when they are hungry and they move on. Next day, next life, they are confident that they will find food. But as, as a human beings, we are not confident. And it's a very fascinating paradox because normally in every species, the alpha is the most dominant and the most confident. But as when you look at human beings, we are the ones that are basically uh, <clears throat> supposed to be the alpha of the world but it's not happening it's not happening and i think that is what we need to focus on and reflect why is it because we may act like the alpha but we are not really the alpha exactly so even our confidence is not real yeah it's just an artificial confidence because there is a deep fear that we may lose this or we may lose that, we may lose jobs, we may lose this. And that's the problem. And people think about freedom. There is no freedom today anywhere in the world. It's just an illusion. But we are so afraid of losing even that illusion that we start fighting wars in that name. And exactly, that is the yeah. As you said, the lifestyle is the, is the illusion. And we think that is, let's say, Alpha, yeah, exactly. but actually it's not, yeah, because if you 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 see the animals, they don't have a lifestyle except if they are in some fancy schmancy home, yeah, but <laughs> but their their owners make them lifestyle. I tell, yeah? you, I tell you, some dogs and cats they are taken to spas. Like if you go to Korea, you go to China, you go to America, there are dog spa, dog salons where they live much more luxuriously than many, many human beings. Many, I'm not yeah. joking. But this is also an illusion. The animals yeah. don't need it, but we somehow project our insecurity onto the animals as well. We project our disease 
onto the animals as well. And that is the problem. I've known some people who have given golden teeth to their dogs. The dogs don't need golden teeth, but they have given golden teeth. They have given bones, uh, what do you call? Uh, golden chains gold, and, and necklaces. Chains and necklaces and diamonds. And we project our fears on uh, every, everybody else in the world. Yeah, exactly. My gosh. Yeah. So, um, but returning now uh, back to fear and uh, it's, uh, let's say, the the energy of the fear that it looks sometimes, feels sometimes that it's pulling us down, uh, that is uh, uh, paralyzing us. Fear is very known to paralyze us. Uh, it might be that we could, for example, have some health issue like knee pain, stomach pain, heart pain, yeah, but there's nothing wrong actually with our body, it's just some sort of mysterious illnesses that are now really all over uh, uh, the world in uh, human have all the, these symptoms, but they are like phantom symptoms, phantom illness it's called, yes. Uh, and sometimes we have, uh, for example, we have a feeling that we would rather die than to go over or to process our uh, fear. Looks like, looks like that it might be that this fear is somehow stronger than than us, than our own energy. <clears throat> what do you think? Uh, it's it's a very 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 uh, wonderful question because it is the reality of most people uh, but actually yeah. in reality uh, fear is not stronger than our consciousness however however fear is one of the most energy drawing emotions so it draws so much of our energy and therefore, we become weak. Okay. And when we are weak, everything else seems very difficult and seems to be very challenging. So, in some way, fear makes us weaker. And then all the other layers of fear and all the other layers of emotions take over. And therefore, it feels like fear is stronger because we are at our weakest. That's why in the yoga philosophy, they are saying, if you replace the fear with faith, you become great, you have great strength. Because faith is the ally of the consciousness. Fear is the enemy of the consciousness in some way. Faith is the positive emotion of the Muladhara Chakra. Fear is the negative emotion of the Muladhara Chakra. That's why fear is so debilitating because fear takes so much of our energy. It's the most energy consuming emotion mm -hmm. so it draws all the energy gives out nothing and that's why it's also very cold because it takes off all the energy gives out nothing so there's no warmth coming that's why when you are fear you're paralyzed you're cold you're shaking so yeah. you are not having energy to move to do anything and that is why fear becomes debilitating <clears throat> because it's basically like a giant vacuum cleaner sucking all the dust fear is like this giant energy sucker which sucks all the energy the prana that we have and that's why all the yoga traditions are saying have faith because the more faith you have the more energy you will have because all yoga traditions is about working with energy not exhausting energy mm -hmm. unfortunately a lot of people come to yoga because of fear oh i will become fat if i don't do yoga i will become uh, weak if i don't do exercise i will so many people come to yoga for fear-based reasons which are the wrong reasons very few people come to yoga saying hey i want to come to yoga because i want to find god or i want to come to yoga yeah. because I want to connect with nature. Many, very few people do that. Most people come out of fear. And that is ego driven. I want this body shape. I want this kind of structure, this kind of buttocks.
this kind of aging. I don't want wrinkles on my face. I don't want like my skin to like fla have flab. All these are fear-based approaches that are coming from this feeling of ego that we have to look a certain way. And that is why fear is very debilitating because it sucks all our energy. Yes, exactly. So, but when we, so you said it's in Muladhara, yeah? Uh, and uh, let's say the opposite or the healing, the healing part is faith. Let's think about, guys, where we can replace fear with faith. Can you, can you think about the situation, for example, when you can uh, uh, replace the fear with faith, let us know in the comments. Would be very nice also for you that you think a little bit. And when you write down, it's already happened. So this is why I encourage you to write down when you where you can do that. Uh, and if we go to the next stage, let's say to the second uh, chakra, Swadhisthana, there is a place for another uh, uh, yak, uh, biak, uh, emotion, guilt. Yeah. We talk about uh, guilt now. We will check the comments uh, uh, later. So let's talk about guilt. Um, we talked about it in uh, our previous uh, interview also already something. So you said that we should not feel guilty as much as uh, we do. Yeah. And uh, uh, so what can we actually do to um, get rid of this some sort of sticky also surviving program that we have in our subconscious and uh, maybe also a question what is hidden hidden under the guilt is there something more under the guilt see as i told you last time guilt in in my view i think there is a slight difference in the way western people are viewing guilt because of its connection to the religious connotations and things like that um, for me guilt is quite positive because guilt is what makes you learn and not repeat mistakes because guilt is a very personal feeling shame is a social uh, feeling you are shamed by others you can never be uh, if there is nobody else existing you don't have shame but you can feel guilty so and the word for guilt in sanskrit aparadha is where a judgment has been made where it is clear that you have committed some kind of inappropriate act. Yes. Now, that is what is guilt. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, in modern society, people are made to feel guilty about very, very silly things. Yeah, exactly. People are made to feel guilty about very, very silly things these things include something like if you are not eating from a fork in an appropriate way then you are made to feel guilty or if you are not doing your homework you are made to feel guilty these are and we carry that kind of feeling of guilt because we are shamed together with the guilt that's the thing we are made to feel like the bad child saying, look at your yeah. brother, look at your sister. He is eating so well with the fork. You are eating so bad. So very often the, there is an interchangeable aspect with shame and guilt. For me, guilt is a very, the feeling of guilt is a very, can be very positive because you can learn from it and it's a way for you to, to, to rise up. To rise up, yeah. To rise up. Okay. Because unless you feel guilty, you will not change. If you feel shamed, you may not necessarily change. But if you yeah. feel guilty, you will change. Because that is something which is coming from a very, very deep place in yourself. And that's why it's very close to the Swadhisthana Chakra. And guilt is coming, is built on the structure of fear. Exactly. Yeah. Fear is oh, yeah. fundamental, what can I say, fundamental state that is yeah. building on the feeling of guilt. And I think this is also related to some degree with perception, how we perceive things. So the, 
the chakras have polarities. The Mukha yeah. Dara is connected to the Sahasrara. So fear, the opposite yeah. is not just faith, but also connection because the emotion of the Sahasrara chakra is connection. The same way the Swadhisthana chakra is related with the Agnya chakra that is related with perception. Now, why would I feel guilty if I don't perceive something that I've done is wrong? So yes. only when I perceive that I have done something wrong, I will feel that guilt. Yeah. If I don't feel that, even if I am given a verdict that I have done this wrong, I won't feel guilty because I'm not seeing that the same way. You understand? Yes, and, and this exactly, yeah. You know, the connection between yeah. the right. chakra as well as the Swadhisthana chakra. In so many ways, the Agnya chakra and the Swadhisthana chakra are connected, and this is one of them. And yeah. give a very simple example when you look at uh, fights that have happened in history, like some people who have fought for just causes have been charged by the government or by the church or other agencies that they have been guilty of treason or they've been guilty of this or they've been guilty of that. Now the government may think that, but that person doesn't feel guilty because he or she has fought for a good cause. Good reason. So yeah. Their perception, their perception determines whether they feel guilty or not. And that's why unless we perceive the guilt, we will not change. Yeah. And this perception is given us by mostly by by, by the environment that we live. Exactly. And maybe there is some sort of healing also when we when we feel guilty, let's pause a little bit and let's ask ourselves, is this like my mother's, my father's, uh, or the society is uh, uh, telling me do that uh, this is the right thing? And then maybe the guilt will be, let's say, the illusion of the disperception, me as a guilty person will slowly disappear. Is this possible like that? Yeah. Look yeah. at all the protests that are happening now around the world, yeah. like the Black Lives Matter protests or the protests against the coronavirus in Berlin recently, where some people even try to charge into the parliament in Berlin. Um, now, according to the law, what they did was a crime. But in yeah. their perception, they don't see that as a crime. That's where perception and guilt are very connected to so Agnya Chakra, to the Swadhisthana Chakra. And that's why I say that it's a very positive thing because when we perceive guilt, then we have somehow taken responsibility for our action and it's a good way to learn. But if we yeah. don't act on it, then we <laughs> suffer. If but if we, we act, we do the same. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, yeah. This is very good. Uh, let's just check the Erika's question, what, uh, and we are going back to fear. So she's asking, what uh, what is the, with the unconscious fears? I realized some strong fears in my body coming from my parents during the Second World War. That you were talking about that, yeah. That actually uh, uh, the fear is uh, uh, the uh, at the conception, and we get it from. Uh, our ancestors, so she is relating to that. Yeah, most of our fear will be at an unconscious level. Yeah, most of our fear, even if exactly. we are attributing to something that is happening now, it is building on something that we have inherited unconsciously. Exactly. Yeah, this yeah. is why sometimes it's so, let's say even uh, uh, more fearful because we don't know what's going on. Yeah, so if she, uh, Erika is experiencing some unconscious fear of her ancestor from the Second World War, it's not hers, yeah? So in a way, uh, it's very good that she recognized that, that she can say, okay, this is not mine, let's leave it to the ancestors, yeah? Uh, uh, and, and, and the healing can, can occur, yeah? and even a different approach accept that fear and let yeah. the fear pass because all the emotions like I told you last time is what is called Vega 
Yeah. Vedha is like, in a way, it is like a river. It has to flow. If you don't allow that emotion to flow, so mm -hmm. if you are here, be afraid for that time, let it pass. The problem is we don't let it go. We hold yeah. on to it. And that yeah. is where yeah. this is the problem. We are afraid. <laughs> we are no. afraid. And even if you don't know, and that is part of the problem with the modern people that we have, we think that we are entitled to know everything. We have to know why we are afraid, why we are angry. No, we don't need to. Fear, all these emotions are past the intellect. They are beyond the intellect and the intellect will not even comprehend why. So even asking a question, why do I have fear? Why do I have anger? Why do I, what do I do to go to, to deal with it? It's wrong. We just have to let it pass. We just let it uh, stay for the duration of as long as it has to be in the body. And once that has passed, we go to the next stage. You look at an animal, when it's afraid, it will retreat yeah. into a place where it feels safe, where it can be fearful. And it stays there with that feeling of fear until its breathing changes, because then it knows that it's no more afraid, then it comes out. Yeah. So just let it pass. There's nothing we need to do. You can't do anything. You just need to let it pass, whatever. Just like when you're happy, you're allowing that happy moment to pass. Yes. Same way, let the fearful moment pass. Yeah. Stay with it. Stay with it. Why the bloody hell modern people think that they are so entitled only for happy emotions and they have to stay with it, but all the bad things, we have to do something about it, we have to do something about it, we have to do something about it. Nothing you have to do. We just have to let it pass. Yeah, sometimes this is this is a little bit uh, uh, for our ego, for our intellect, a little bit, uh, let's say, uh, confusing and uh, again, fearful, yeah. It's also the ego structure, yeah. the feeling of guilt and shame, because many of the people in the modern era, and I have to say most of this is coming from the Western education, uh, you're not really allowed to have these negative feelings. Yeah, exactly. Be polite. We have to be social. We have to put a smiling face all the time. That's not right. That's not right. So you just have. And so the reason why they are seeking desperately answers is because they don't want to live with that feeling that they are imperfect because they have anger. They are imperfect because they have fear. They are imperfect because they have sadness. Get over yeah. with it. There is nobody in this world who is yeah. neither perfect nor who is devoid of any of these feelings. Exactly. We are all it's human. Perfect. Human being means to be imperfect. Yeah. Human, being human means to be imperfect. If we were perfect, we would be God. We are not God. We are all imperfect human beings. Whether we like but it or not. But it's also, I'm thinking now, for example, like uh, uh, we, if like we are, like there are two people and one is getting angry and the other is getting afraid of that anger, you know, so it's also this mirroring and uh, uh, let's say a relationship, in a relationship, we are afraid of the anger of the other, yeah, let's say, for example. So it's like a, a mixture. That's again the programming. Yeah. that anger is something bad. Yeah. Some people for their rehabilitation, they have to come and spend some internship in some Indian families, because in Indian families, many like my own family or my uncle's family or my cousins or many others I know, anger is expressed in the house and then continued. Life goes on. They shout, ba, 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 ba. after that, life goes on. I think the Italians have this too. The mother yeah. and the son, they keep fighting with each other. Maybe five, ten minutes later, oh, mama mia, I love you, I love you. And then they just... Exactly. 
Yeah, this is this is very nice. We Slovenians are uh, completely on the opposite side. We are very very uh, close to people, and we are like smiling. And the more you are perfect, uh, the more, uh, let's say, they are fond of you. But uh, behind your back, they are talking uh, different other things. So, it's it's uh, a difficult uh, 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 atmosphere, difficult environment that we are now as a modern human. Yes, would be much more let's say healthy emotional and subconscious uh, uh, if we would be like in in uh, cave uh, cave uh, uh, times you know when we live in caves it would be probably much more healthier for our subconscious yeah uh, and let's continue now with uh, with the shame so uh, also shame starts in very early age in uh, and it's as uh, as we, uh, as you already mentioned uh, a little bit, it's very devastating for some people. Sometimes can be, can lead also to the borderline personalities like narcissism, as we know now, it's uh, a huge uh, issue. So, which uh, you mean, uh, which you think opposite uh, feeling would help us to heal that wound of shame that we all have? Yeah. If you look at it very closely, shame is always associated with the Manipuraka Chakra. And the Manipuraka Chakra is the basis for the ego. And yeah. it starts to develop when we are about three, four years of age. And that is when the child starts to realize that it's different, separate from other people. Before that, it's thinking that it is part of a social net. It's only when we are about three, four years old, we start to have develop our own individual sense of self. And that's when, if you think about it very carefully, many, many parts of the world, including in India and other countries, we start shaming the child and therefore asking it to start wearing clothes. Yeah. Before that, the child doesn't know shame. It's only when this ego develops that there is a sense of me and them. I am belonging to a family that the shame comes, you know. And so shame is an emotion that is always connected with the sense of acceptance by others or by the society. And that is why we get shamed very easily because we feel that others will not accept us. The antidote is very simple, self-acceptance, that's all. If you are able to accept yourself as you are, then it's not an egoistic thing. If you accept that, okay, I'm, I'm not perfect, I have some defects, but this is who I am, but there is nobody else perfect. I'm not going to let somebody shame me. Nobody will be able to shame you because with shame, you have a choice. You don't have to let somebody else shame you if you are able to have self-acceptance yeah it looks like some sort of yeah that, that's all it's very simple self-acceptance is essentially the antidote for shame and that is part of the problem because we do not know what our self is and that is why we don't accept it because how can you accept something that you don't know? I have suffered from this problem many years ago. I was searching of who I am, what I am. And the more clear I become about my dharma, my nature, who I am, the more I become anchored in myself and the less people are able to shame me for whatever it is. People can shame you for whatever the reason it could be body shaming, it could be color shaming, it could be profession shaming, it could be everything, age shaming, yeah. oh, you are so old. People can always shame, oh, you are so young, oh, you are so old, oh, you don't have experience, oh, you are black, oh, you are brown, oh, you are this, oh, you are that. But if you don't allow that, because you have self-embraced yourself, I've not mastered it yet, but I'm coming more and more to that state you will not so easily be shamed. So shame is always about an acceptance. That's why if you can accept yourself, 
then you don't have to worry about what other people think of you, what other people say about you. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it looks like there is some sort of evolution, let's say from Muladhara to Svadishtana, you know, so it's have fate, you know, replace fear with fate. And then, uh, okay, if you did something wrong, then you level up and you uh, teach uh, and have a, uh, when you're, let's say, do something uh, and you're guilty, you need to learn from that and then self-acceptance looks like that is some sort of evolution also like emotion in emotions yeah yeah something of like course. that yeah of course yeah so uh let's let's speak about the last hero of our wonderful uh, four uh anger so do we do uh, ourselves harm when we don't uh, express anger and when we don't express anger let's say we are mostly perceived as nice people as uh, people pleaser people and but in inside we are never happy when we are like that yes yeah why do we get anger is because we are not seen or heard or accepted for who we are See, when you get angry, why do you shout at somebody? The person is very near you, but you are shouting at them. They can hear you even if you talk in a calm tone, but you are shouting at them. Why? Because at some place you feel that they are so distant, they cannot hear you because normally when you have to shout when people are distant. So yeah. at some point in your heart, you feel that there is a distance and that's why you shout. So it's not, it's a feeling. Anger comes from a place of not being seen for who we are or accepted for who we are or, you know, heard for who we are or what we have to say. So in some way, that is why if you look at all the angry movements are coming, that is what is happening. When you look at uh, Black Lives Matter, it's anger is coming because they have not been heard for who they are and what their rights are. And I know this feeling myself because I'm not black, but I'm brown, I'm not white. So I faced racism in many countries when I travel. And I can see very clearly that the other side does not want to hear our story or our side. So that's where the anger comes. That's one dimension of anger. The other dimension of anger is the feeling of being caged. Mm -hmm. You are not allowed to be yourself. So if, for example, this is also connected with the, uh, with the examples I gave or whatever, like yeah. many times people who are complaining, like many times I've seen, uh, I used to be married to a German lady and sometimes we would hang out with her German friends and they were living in India and they were complaining about how some of the foreigners like the Turkish people in Germany, they are never integrating into Germany. Oh, they have to integrate, they, you know, they cannot be who they are. So the Turkish people is very angry because they are not allowed to be who they are. Mm -hmm. The same Germans, they are here in India. They are not accepting India as it is and, be, and they are not living like how Indians are living. They are wearing shorts and tank tops and going into temple and this and that in the name of freedom. This is the white supremacy that is coming. But yeah. Yeah. if they were made to not be like that, they will get angry. And this is what we are seeing now. For example, in the Corona times, this is one thing that is really, really coming out because this lack of mobility or freedom that many people are having because they're all under what is called a caged environment. Now, that's why many people are exploding because humanity, we are not meant to be caged. And this is something that I strongly, strongly believe because, because we are so-called a civilization, we are angry because originally for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, 
human beings were people who were moving all the time. Then we made houses, civilizations, boundaries where we have to be fitting in. So we have restricted our essential fundamental nature of being mobile and therefore we are angry as a society but we don't know what we are angry about because we have suppressed ourselves with all these boundaries and we always want to blame the foreigner, blame the other. It's so easy to blame the other. You know, different countries blame each other. India blames Pakistan for all the problems. Pakistan blames India. Nobody will take self-responsibility. America is blaming China. China is blaming America. Australia will blame New Zealand. New Zealand will blame Australia. Singapore will blame Malaysia. Malaysia will blame Singapore. Nobody wants to take self-responsibility because blaming is easier. But the real anger is coming because something is being suppressed. And therefore, if we don't express, we will eventually have anger. And the most fun, the funny thing is, if we suppress even our anger, it's almost like we are swallowing a bomb and that bomb will explode inside. That's why we have autoimmune disorders, cancer, diabetes, multiple sclerosis, skin problems, eczema, rash, all this because we are swallowing that anger bomb that is exploding inside us. And if we are expressing our feeling and it gets heard at a simple level day after day, this giant anger bomb will not exist or will not manifest. Let's say I disagree with somebody. I just say, hey, you know what? I disagree with you. And the other person says, that's fine. We don't need to agree with each other. We can have different views. End of story. The disagreement has been expressed. We won't be angry with each other or punch each other on the face. But if that is suppressed, I cannot tell that I disagree with this person. Then I go home. One of my family member irritates me. I cannot tell that person that they are irritating. Then I go to my job. My boss is being so bad. I cannot tell my boss that he or she is irritating me. Then I come to the train and some poor chap who is probably a little bit weaker than us comes and maybe sits near us and we get so angry. We explode on that poor chap. That's not right. So that's what is the problem with the anger. If you suppress it, it'll either explode inside you or it'll express, explode outside on a poor person who is usually slightly weaker than you. That's where domestic violence happens. Yes. Uh, violent like rape and other things happen. Uh, harassment in the office happens because the boss is harassing the weaker ones, etc. All these are because there's suppression of anger at different layers. That's why I'm a believer that anger should be expressed to the person we are angry with in the moment we are angry with in, the, in an appropriate way. We just need to find appropriate ways to express it and not become violent because then if we don't express it, it will grow into a big bomb maybe express it at that moment to the right person when it's let's say at the, the at the beginning and it still has a point and uh, it does not go into resentment and it's not maybe so explosive because when as you said it grows yeah in and time then, and there's the other side as well yeah if somebody is angrily accusing you or attacking you you don't have to react if you are not guilty. Yes. Just because somebody is accusing you of this or of that, it doesn't mean that you have to accept that. Yes. This you know, and family members will attack you for this or yeah. for that. You don't have to accept it if you don't feel guilty. If you are not guilty of it, you don't. Because the moment you react, and why do you react is because your ego is getting hurt. You want to be perfect. Yeah. Exactly. But for this really cause to be, you need to have, let's say, very good and balanced uh, Agnya Chakra, yes. For anger, for the, the polarity is 
the throat chakra. Yeah. So but for this perception, you know, like, yeah, for before. Uh huh. Yeah. Guilt is about perception. Anger is about expression. Mm -hmm. So anger and expression are very strongly connected. The Manipuraka chakra, Vishuddhi chakra are strongly connected. And expression is not only through words. Expression is through many things. Maybe you can just dance your anger out or yes. run or do other things so that this and Same. that's what yeah. I'm saying. Same. In ancient time, people were moving freely. That's the way they were expressing. The moment you put a boundary and say you cannot cross this boundary, their freedom is getting suppressed. Well, yes, as ex uh, uh, art expressive uh, therapist, uh, we do in uh, in my workshops and uh, my uh, programs and uh, 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 with my clients, uh, we do really a lot of these expressions, which uh, of course they become uh, grief, sadness, anger, and it's really very. I recommend everyone just if you are in any emotions that you're stuck in, just go and dance or sing or just paint. It does not need to be perfect just splash the colors you will feel immediately better uh what i wanted to say before is like that for all let's say all life not just for the anger but for also to let's say uh reflect on anger to reply on 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 someone who is angry at you yeah and accusing you that you really need to have a good perception of yourself who you are from magna chakra like like uh, uh um, really self uh, self aware yeah and this this i think uh, is very important but also it's very hard somehow to to get there yeah you know if that you say okay the person is angry it's his or her story yeah uh, i actually don't have anything to do with it i can just be there and acknowledge their anger you need to be very strong in that yeah and I think this is where the language is so important. Um, <laughs> in India, we like to blame the British for everything. <laughs> in this case, the language English is very, very tricky. Because in English, we say, I am angry. I am sad. I am, fe I am fearful. Yeah. Whereas in Sanskrit or in Tamil languages, in Indian languages, and I know this for, this is the same in German as well. We don't say I am angry. We say I have anger. Oh my God. I have, right. fear. I have sadness. Ich bin angst is not ich habe angst. I have angst. I have fear. So when the language is very important because the moment you start saying I am angry in some way you are identifying yourself with that anger rather than something like I have anger. I have anger is like you know I have tea. See I have this Chinese tea called Pang Da Hai. I have it now I don't have it because I've let it go. I hold it, I have it, I let it go, I don't have it. So the same way, the languaging is very important because if we keep yeah. reminding ourselves that I am angry, I am depressed, I am sad, I am this, you're making yourself the subject yeah. of that rather than limit anger as one thing that you have, which can be replaced by another thing you have. Whereas if you say, I am angry, you're you not going to be able to that with something else because you are that. Exactly. Yeah. That, you are never that anger. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you it's terrible. Have. I think if I remember my German learning from the Goethe Institute, which I learned for about one and a half years, we say, I, ich habe Angst. I, ha I have fear. I think my dear friend Erika and Rainy can correct it if my German is still correct. But I think, and in Indian languages, it is always I have, yeah. not I am. Yeah, uh, in Slovenia, we also have the same. 
like I, I, I am angry and uh, um, we I always try to to express differently like I, I have a feeling of being anger but it's it's uh, of course if you are from the young age uh, uh, taught in the language is like that it's very very difficult but at, at least we can start to be aware of this that this is not who we are but it's separate from us and it actually can flow yeah as 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 we are open it, it will flow faster yeah through us I presume. So we had a little questions, few questions here. Let's, uh, um, I think that you already answered to Claire's, uh, Fleming, hello, Claire, question about uh, COVID and lockdowns and lost. Uh, and lost. So uh, she's asking what approaches uh, uh, you suggest to deal with uh, that kind uh, uh, of anger uh in uh this COVID, ti COVID times so i think you our already freedom, our freedom has been restricted and i think our voices are not being heard yeah and i think that is where we are angry about many of these things and i'm guilty of that as well i also feel very angry with my government as approach because we have four million cases now and it's not a, a joke wow. So, it's not a joke, yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people have died. So, of course, the voices of people are not really heard. And uh, so yeah. the freedoms have been um, restricted. So I think that is uh, a normal anger. The way to deal with it is spend this anger energy somehow. Talk to some friend and express your anger that, you know, I am angry about this, I am angry. Even if you cannot do anything about it, expressing, because I told you, anger and expression are connected. Together, yeah. I do recommend art therapy, for sure. Uh, so, uh, hi, Diana, you are here with us uh, 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 again. And Diana, you are, uh, Diana, you are asking, but what if these emotions are part of our way to approach? life and uh, this affects our way of living or life uh, quality. This so, is the time of my training, oh my god. Diana is joining, oh my god, yes. <laughs> she is Moi Mala. Very much. Well, I think the fundamental confusion is that emotions are necessary for life, but this concept of quality of life is not something that we should get confused that we should always have high quality of life things cannot be always on a high always things have to go up and down only when things go down we will appreciate the high so negative and positive emotions are part of life so we must have also moments of the down so that we can appreciate the moments of the high none of them should be rejected but none of them should define who you are. Yeah, exactly. We don't so say I, in Tamil also, or my language Tamil, we also don't say I am happy. We say I have happiness. Oh, and we say I am happy in Slovenian. So this is good. But then. even that is you're not happy because yeah. happiness is not a permanent state. Yeah, exactly. That is where your expectation will build and you will get disappointed when you don't have that happiness. And then this would not be true and you will not trust anymore when you will say I'm happy. Life, a ambitious circle. life should not be confused. Living, we must live every emotion. Wow. We must so, live every emotion. And so, we are again on the first question, Kaustuk. Are we predestined to, to live these emotions? Looks like that is part of our human existence. Like I think in the last interview, I said these emotions are a gift. We are given gift. So we have to use it whenever it's needed. Yeah. We have to. Like sadness, if your cat or dog dies or your mother or father dies. My father died in 2016. I have to have sadness. I cannot be happy at that time saying, oh, I want to be happy because that's what improves my quality of life. No, I have to have the sadness. Yeah, exactly. So uh, Isabel uh, is, uh, uh, she's asking, is it 
energy that needs to flow and then go away. So, uh, for example, uh, yeah. I think every emotion, and this is also related with something that you talked about how to deal with some of the emotions like fear or guilt or shame or something like that. And what I have realized is whenever I feel the fear or guilt or shame or whatever, at some point to acknowledge that I have fear. Now, right now, I feel afraid. The moment you come to that recognition and acceptance, already you are letting it pass. Yes. It's almost like you are you are opening the door to a guest saying, yes, you are welcome to be here for some yeah. time. I accept you in my home. And then, you know, you are giving them some tea or whatever to, to stay for a few moments and then they have to leave. The same the way yeah. you say, I'm afraid, I feel sad, I feel depressed. The moment you start acknowledging those feelings and relax with that, saying, I'm comfortable with my fear. I'm comfortable that I have fear. I'm not bad person because I have fear. I'm not and bad person normal. because I have anger. Already there's an acceptance. You let it go. Yes. So uh, we have, uh, we now, uh, we can um, read here in the comments in different language. For example, uh, hello, Gabriela is the same in Italian. O paura, yes. In French is the same. Je peux, probably something like that. Uh, und habe und habe angst. Oh, is like that, Erika. I'm happy at the moment, Erika is saying. Or ich bin wütend. Okay, my language is. And we have a Slovenian lady here, Moitza. Hi, hello. How are you? Moitza is my ex colleague. So very nice to read uh, you are here welcome uh the last and i think it could be also very very important question Kaustop looks like for me as a, let's say a human being and a person and a therapist that all those feelings uh it looks like that something might be behind all this feelings okay we put it like a label this is fear but it looks i uh, somehow i feel that something stronger behind that something stronger than us and let's say my personal experience and experience with my clients is that uh in a way certain program or maybe i also have a feeling certain memory can be that uh opens the door as you said before that opens the door for some some sort of energies, I, I don't know if I can say dark energies, but some sort of energies that are then plug into us, stick to us, and then block take over, yeah? Is this possible? Because so I can have a feeling that I can, let's say, sense these energies, maybe in a way communicate also, you know, like very, oh, wow, let's see what's there, but I can sense that is behind the feeling. Of course, of course, this is possible and it, it is definitely, I've seen it in many cases and I've experienced it and I've talked to many native healers, alternate healers, who have also acknowledged this kind of things and uh, uh, it's, it's true. For example, why do you think that so many people uh, are angry who, who who are, let's say, have experienced some form of abuse like domestic violence or sexual abuse or things like that is because that abuse is caused by an anger energy of the aggressor, an anger energy. Nobody is going to beat a child at home because they are happy, because they are angry, they are hitting that child. So that energy of that person could actually reside in that person and this child becomes angry in the future. Mm -hmm. So that anger need not have its origins from the child, 
but somehow circumstances has placed an angry entity in that child. So and we can talk about that. Yeah. Okay. It's possible that these kind of things happen, but it's not the only thing that creates anger in people. But this kind of thing can happen. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I can sense also with the people there, not my clients. I can actually can see and can sense uh -huh, it's there. So how it it uh, it showed shows me it it appears to me. So they 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 show showed me, yeah. Uh, and I am like, okay, I don't have anything to do with you if you are not my client, of course, yeah. So uh, you are there. I'm here because I know these are tricky things, yeah. Especially for therapists to deal with that. Uh, I learned that from you. So uh, this actually exists, you know. I, I have all these experience. I'm for sure you also have that kind of things. They exist, yeah. Of course. And this can be both positive and negative. Sometimes positive energies can also exist and of they can course. guide their person like to guide them to do some good things as well. So there's both exactly. are possible. Both are possible. So in positive way, for example, we have like ancestors guiding us or uh, let's say some, some other. If you, yeah. if you look at the origin of the word genius, it comes yeah. from the word genie. It's so almost like some, yeah, some some energy is guiding this person to create these remarkable things. So yeah. that's basically in a positive way an example. The ego will want to take the credit, say I did it, but yeah. it's not just you alone. Obviously, there's something else behind it that is doing it. I mean, I, I, I give a, I give examples many, many times. I'm drawing practices for my students like this. You know, I, I draw practices in a paper. And yeah. in my mind, I'm thinking that I have to give the student this mantra. Yes. But then my pen yes. writes something else. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. Okay. I know that. Yeah. And very often, I go with the flow. I accept yeah. what and I teach that and on retrospect I realize that what my hand wrote was the right mantra for that person not what my mind was thinking because my mind was doing something rational but my hand followed my heart yes exactly and I don't want to take credit for that saying I'm such a great guy that this has happened. Something is guiding. Yeah. Something is guiding. And we all have this opportunity, which we yeah. have to trust and listen. But that can only come when we stop being in our head. If we are always in the head, we cannot go into the places of intuition in our heart. Exactly. Yeah. I also have that kind of uh, experience. It's uh, really very interesting because uh, you need to, I needed to acknowledge first and then trust it. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I, I also have a workshop uh, about creativity and intuition in Slovenia here. And uh, I teach exactly that, how to acknowledge it, uh, how to trust it and how to let it uh, uh, flow. Yeah. And then life becomes much more easier, I think, when uh, it's, uh, it's in all uh, daily life you have. Yeah? It's not just when you are with clients. It can also be in all daily life. This is then really very good. So uh, develop your intuition. It's a very, very, very good, uh, let's say, advice uh, uh, in the end of our interview. Kaustup, it's already one hour and 20 minutes. It uh, runs so fast. Yeah, we could talk for, I think, uh, a day and we would not, uh, uh, we would not end. Yeah. Uh, so uh, thank you very much, um, dear Kaustup, for all these great answers. Answers. Answered. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> answers. Yes. And uh, thank you, dear guys, that uh, ladies and gentlemen, that you were here with us. 
uh, in the end of this uh, uh, very, very good and um, uh, very, very uh, enlightened interview about the emotions, uh, I would ask us to chant and uh, I am inviting you for join us in uh, I think two weeks uh, we are going to have another very interesting interview. Stay tuned with us and uh, please uh, thank you, Kostop, again and everyone and uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Namaste. Namaste. Shanno Metra Shamvaruna Shanno Bhavatwar Yama Shanna Indro Brahaspati Shanno Vishnuru Kramaha Namo Brahmane Namaste Vayu Tvameva Pratyaksham Brahmase Swameva Pratyaksham Brahmavadishyami Ratham Vadishyami Satyam Vadishyami Tanmam Avatu Tadvataram Avatu Avatu Maam Avatu Vakta Namaste, friends. Namaste.